Hello and welcome to Giga Play Studio. In this tutorial we'll look at how to create a waterfall using alpha mats. You can create them in a program like Particle Illusions, but we've made some for you that will be available on GigaPlay.com. Animated alpha maps are a great way to bring interesting effects into a view scenery that would otherwise be difficult to create. So here is your normal setup, and to begin just create an alpha plane, and in the alpha plane options load one of the waterfalls. Right here you'll find two files. One is the animation itself and the other is the alpha picture. Both of these will be available of course for download for your use. And click on the reverse buttons at the upper right corner to change the waterfall part to black making it the transparent part of the map. Also set the adjust proportions and you want to it to always face the camera. So enable billboard. Click OK. And let's move right here and let's adjust it just a little bit. And I want to put it on the line here and the reason is because sometimes it's hard to see the billboard from this view. And also let's increase it in size and move it. Just adjust it slightly so you have a nice position. be about like this. Let's take our main camera and move it right around here and also on the main camera set its options make it render to screen and you'll want it to be widescreen and we can make it about 640 by 480. So you, you have your presets now for the waterfall and if you see it animated you'll see how the frames will change because this is actually an animated plane. A couple of things you might want to modify with the alpha plane selected. Edit material and go to the effects tab and just increase the diffuse and ambient lighting and disable cast shadow. It will be a little bit brighter now with the ambient lighting and if you preview you can see how this waterfall looks now. So the plane is located here let's go now and set a little bit of a background for this and you can set this in any way you want I'll just put in a few rocks and we won't spend too much time creating this and you can see how these rocks are going to become part of this waterfall now Make some bigger, some smaller, just move them in back there. And I'm just positioning these rocks. I just want to get them in just the right place. It's kind of like building a pond and a waterfall in your yard but the rocks are a lot lighter and you don't have to upkeep it with the chemicals and cleaning out the pump and such and a few quick renders will help you arrange it to your liking and you'll want to get it just right so that the water looks like it's coming over the edge of the rocks and hitting some of the rocks there you can add a few more for accuracy, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we'll just arrange these a bit better. And this will give you a good idea of how that can work. Maybe we'll add a couple more rocks in front, and that will give some depth to the picture with the waterfall going behind there. just like that and that looks nice kind of more three-dimensional picture go now select all the rocks and change their material to something more like gray mountains also um, we want to create a cloud and we'll just set that cloud right in back and 
move it right in there and give a nice moist look to the scene. And now make a cube and put it in front, put it right there where your waterfall is. Just above that. And as a material, load a volumetric material and make it thin white smoke. And double click on this material to edit it. And you'll want to increase the density slightly. And this will give you some mist at the base of your waterfall. Also, make the lighting model shaded and increase the diffuse and ambient just a little and enable these options in global transformation so that when we animate it, the smoke will start moving. And now, go on to load your atmosphere and Bisbee should give you a nice look. Of course, because you're here, you'll want to move the sun now so that it's shining on the waterfall that's coming down. And, and that's a good preview of what it looks like. And you can see we have a little bit more glare than we want with the water. And to fix that, you can um, decrease the density. So we'll go in to edit the material of our cube. Decrease the density of the smoke and increase the fuzziness, and that will reduce the glare effect. Now to add some life to your scene, add some life. We'll bring in a plant and we'll use a tree. And now a tree, you'll see, doesn't have to be a tree. By turning it this way, we've made it into a nice bush. And another tree. We'll bring it up there a little bit. bring in another one and put it right there on the side and you're just framing this water feature with green. And again these virtual plants have the advantage of being maintenance free. And one more. We'll make it a lot smaller and we'll put it right here on the side. So let's see that. And that's looking pretty good. You can see with the camera close in, our arrangement no longer looks like a bunch of rocks and plants in the middle of nowhere. You can almost see the mountain canyon beyond the view of your camera. So now it's time to animate our scene. With the main camera selected, click on the animation button. and Go ahead and close the wizard. You don't need that. Now you have your timeline open. Right click, add keyframe, and move it to maybe four seconds. Add another keyframe there. And now with that keyframe in place, open the cube, the material editor, and decrease the density a little bit, and you'll get the option for a smooth animated transition, which is what you want. Just modify a few settings, and that change will appear over time in the animation. And the fog will reduce just a little bit how we have that set. And now you're ready to render your animation. And before you start, make sure your animation renders options are set right. Use broadcast quality because you want that motion blur. And select your file and let's name that waterfall. Okay, I actually don't want to overwrite that. And those are our alpha maps. So we'll call that simply animation. Save it this way, 24 frames, 640 by 480. And I want to render this externally. And if you have some nodes, some extra computers in your network, you can add them here and it's easy. Enable external and click on that edit button and it will pop up with some options and let's set up our Hyperview Network Manager. So click Edit in that menu and here you'll see I have my five cows and View comes with a standard package of being able to use five cows or rendering computers. Yours can be one of them. Or you can buy a license to add more to your render network. Now to find the computers on your network 
To use as cows, click auto scan or add them manually. Type in the name or the IP address. So we're using these five cows for our rendering. Let's close it, click OK, and we're ready. Let's render animation. As that is happening, you'll notice that it's initializing, it's sending the textures to the machines, and here's where you want a faster network. The faster it is, the faster it will send the data to the computers so they can start rendering, and I recommend at least one gigabit. You can see with a lot of textures, it can take some time. Flat is only at the beginning. After that, they will start to render, and you'll be able to see how fast they can render and how long it will take. And rendering on a network can really save you a lot of time if you have that option. So let's take a look at our final animation now. You can see that you could add some more rocks, some more details here to make a nice look. But you can see how to make these alpha plane animations into waterfalls. And use a volumetric material object to add some realism, that mist in there. And you can scale these alpha planes tall and skinny or just short, a short drop. So thank you for watching this Geek at Play tutorial. Please come visit us on the web at www.viewtutorials.com.